Welcome. We have here a thick wire of radius A, and in the real world, our current tends to be closer to the edge than in the center. So we're going to model this as a non-uniform current density. We are going to say that our J is equal to C some constant times r squared for r less than a, the radius of our cylinder, and then j is equal to zero for r greater than a, the radius of our cylinder. So if we want to show this, we can look at our current density versus radius. After our radius a, our current density goes to zero, but before then it starts at zero, because we get start at radius zero, and then it goes up parabolically until it discontinuously jumps down like this. If we wanted to draw this, we could draw kind of small and progressively larger currents in each direction, and it's a little bit tough to do, but maybe we kind of small x's and bigger x's. What I want us to understand is, right, this is radially symmetric, so we still have our cylindrical symmetry. If we still have our cylindrical symmetry, then we want our Amperian loops to still be circles. And we'll have a circle outside of the wire, so represented like this in this perspective, but also one inside of the wire. So just to remind ourselves, right, this is going to be some variable r for both. So variable r for both. And so we need two different regions to solve, so we're going to have two different regions to solve over here. In our organized step, we have Ampere's law, which is that our path integral of v dot ds is equal to mu naught times the current i that passes through. Now, we're going to solve kind of both sides of this. For here, we first have that our b dot ds is equal to our closed integral over a circle of b ds, because we know that our magnetic field is going to be, well, in the opposite direction, is going to be in the tangential direction based on this current, and so our dot product resolves to one, and then our magnetic field, since we have cylindrical symmetry, we know that our right magnetic field is a function of the radius and in the theta hat direction. So what we get is that our closed integral of b dot ds is equal to b times delta s of our circle, or it's equal to b times 2 pi r. Over on the mu naught through, we're going to have mu naught times our integral of the current density dA for a circle. So if we remember, the area of a circle is pi r squared, so dA dr is 2 pi r, so then dA is 2 pi r dr. So if we have this, then we have that our mu naught i through on this side is equal to our integral of whatever j is times 2 pi r dr. So if we are inside, the wire mu naught i through, we start at zero, and we end at the radius r inside of our wire. If we do this, our j is always going to be c times r squared. We'll have our mu naught 
uh, front, and then we have our dA, 2 pi r dr. So we can pull mu naught c and 2 pi out of the integral. And we're left with r squared times r, which is r to the third dr, from again 0 to r. So we will get mu naught c times 2 pi, all times r to the fourth over 4. So to bring this down to here, now we have b times 2 pi r is equal to mu naught c times 2 pi r to the fourth over 4. We can do a little bit of canceling, our 2 pi and 2 pi cancel, and r will cancel to 1 power, and we get then that our magnetic field is mu naught times c times r to the third over 4, and we know that our Magnetic field has to be a function of r. It is a function of r. Then it has to be in the theta hat direction. So we can give it direction by that. And this is inside the wire, or we are saying r less than a. If we want to look at outside of the wire, We continue with this same step, mu naught i through equals mu naught. But now we have two separate integrals. Because as we go from the center all the way out, we go from one region from 0 to a, and another region from a to r. And so our current density in this first region is cr squared. Yay. And luckily enough for us, right, out in the second region, it's zero. So any definite integral of zero is zero, so we don't have to worry about that. And so we have that our mu naught i through is mu naught integral c r squared, and then our dA is the same dA, so 2 pi r dr, 0 to a. This should look very similar. The only difference is the limits. Instead of 0 to r, it's 0 to a. So we have our mu naught i through is mu naught c, 2 pi, a to the fourth over 4. And we know that our mu naught i through is equal to b times 2 pi r, so we have over here, b times 2 pi r, right, we're now going to take this, bring it over here, and this is equal to mu naught c times 2 pi a to the fourth over 4. So we still can cancel, but not as excitedly as we were last time. So the 2 pi still cancel. But now, this r is a variable, right? As we increase our Ampere loop, this r increases. But this a is a constant. As we increase this Ampere loop, the limit of the wire stays the same. So we get that our b is equal to mu naught c a to the fourth over 4 r. And we know theta hat and this is for outside the wire, or r greater than a. 